There's more tigers in captivity in the USA alone than there is in the wild across the entire world. Welcome to This Week in Ecology, a new series where I have five minutes to break down interesting ecology and environmental topics that are impacting the world this week. So today's topic was inspired by breaking news coming out of Vancouver, British Columbia, where a man was just fined $18,000 for smuggling 19 turtles into Canada. Six of those are considered endangered. Is having a wild animal as a pet bad? What if I really want to snuggle with a puma? And what if my friend owns a wolf as a pet? Let's start by defining what a pet is as we know it. So a pet is an animal that's primarily used for companionship, pleasure, or taken in as an act of compassion. Typically we think of pets as dogs, cats, but what about tigers, gorillas? What makes them different from dogs and cats? Keeping unusual or rare animals as pets is known by the term exotic pets some unincorporated municipalities in the United States, you can actually find that there is a tiger or a gorilla in your backyard that your neighbor is able to keep with a simple permit you apply for online. Let's talk about how having a wild animal as a pet impacts the animal itself, the public, the environment, and funds the illegal wildlife trade. How can having a monkey as a pet actually fund cartels? Yeah, that's right. Poaching is seen as pretty universally bad across the Western world. However, the illegal wildlife trade also is not just ivory. The illegal wildlife trade generates about $20 billion annually. And that's just behind drugs, guns, and human trafficking. Many of these tigers do not come from homes where they're loved and cared for. Unfortunately, a lot of these animals are smuggled through suitcases, through basketballs, through hidden compartments in people's pants, or captive bred in less than ideal condition. Buying exotic animals internationally can often actually support smuggling, cartels, mafia organizations that take the wild animal out of their natural habitat in order to sell to you as a pet. But what if I buy this animal from a friend or a Craigslist ad? Doesn't that eliminate all the negative parts of it because I'm not funding any cartels? So let's talk about the impact that being kept as a pet actually has on the wild animal itself. The reality is that dogs and cats have been domesticated by humans for centuries to adapt and live in homes and domestic settings. Wildlife are first of all animals. Forming bonds with humans, however, is not their primary goal. They want to survive. That's their number one instinct. Many people, the reality is, is in their homes cannot provide a suitable habitat for the wild animal itself. For example, wolves can travel 10 to 30 miles a day in the wild. However, many people keep wolves in their homes. They're not gonna be able to live true to their natural habitat. So many people buy animals when they're small and cute and adorable, and then once they get big and scary, they cannot keep them in their house anymore. So unfortunately, at that point, the animal's only chance is to be euthanized or to be brought to a sanctuary if one is even available. So while some people might be really well-meaning, they really don't understand the true dynamics of how to care for a wild animal. You might have all the best intentions to provide a good home for this animal. However, unless you're fully trained in how to care for an animal, Animal like this, oftentimes it's going to result in the animal being harmed in your care. The horrifying story that comes to mind first is the tragedy that came out of the Zanesville Zoo escape. So a man in Ohio owned a backyard zoo. And I just saw a wolf. I think I just seen one. It looked like a jaguar or a wolf or something. One day he decided to release all of his animals and shoot himself in the head. 110 of those animals were shot by police. Captivity will often result in the death of these animals with un qualified owners who do not know how to care for them. The removal of wild animals from their natural environments to therefore smuggle them in as pets leads to a depletion of wildlife populations. This leads to a reduction in biological diversity and it really upsets predator-prey dynamics. While 
captive breeding is less environmentally harmful. Animals used for breeding are still often at one point taken from their wild habitat. What about those situations where someone is saving an animal? So definitely contact your local wildlife sanctuary. By taking in a wild animal, it could cause some harm to yourself or you might inadvertently hurt the animal just not knowing how to care for it. Is keeping a wild animal as a pet a good thing? Leave it to the professionals to care for animals, how to introduce it back into its environment if possible, and if not, work in, within a sanctuary setting to actually provide it the habitat and the care it needs to live out the rest of its life. If you have more ideas on this week in ecology topics, feel free to let me know in a comment down below or DM me on Instagram at veganbelowzero. If you're interested in learning more about being a wildlife biologist, how you can get into this career field and what a day in my life is like, click the subscribe button down below and watch these next videos to learn more.